What's cracking YouTube? I'm photographer TK North here in Lightroom today because we have some huge new updates to Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. If you haven't seen it yet, that of course is auto masking for both selecting the sky, selecting subject, as well as the whole way we use radial filters, graduated filters, brushes has totally changed. It's a lot more intuitive, now displayed a bit like layers in Photoshop. So these new masking tools make it so easy to select our subject, make adjustments just to the subject without affecting the rest of the image. Same with the sky, they're gonna save us so much time. These features do work really well, but as you can imagine, sometimes these hit the mark, sometimes they're not always spot on, they're not always perfect. So I've got a few tips to really get the most out of using these tools. Now it doesn't matter whether you're using Lightroom or Lightroom Classic, now these updates have come to both, which is really exciting as well. Let's jump in and get started. So the first example here, I just wanna show you how easy it is to select your subject. Of course, this will depend on the image, but usually it will provide a great starting point and you can go and touch it up if need be. To mask your subject, usually you would have to either brush it out or use something like a radial filter. Now, if you come up to masking, which is all under this circle here, so click on that. Here are all our different options for masking. Two auto ones, select subject and select sky, and then a few other options. The first thing I wanna show you if we go select subject, we can see on this one, it's done an okay job. It's done most of the subject really well, but it's missed this area in between the legs. I'm just gonna undo that and show you if you expose your image for the subject. So now my subject's exposed and you can see all the detail in the subject and then I select subject. Boom, you can see it's actually done a lot better job. And this is something I've found out from experimenting. If your subject's exposed correctly, it will do a better job. Then you can go down and darken the image again and your mask will still be there. So now I can go and change some of the settings on this mask just to brighten up the subject. So there, just with a few clicks, we've gone from this to this. It is really exciting, really easy to use. It doesn't always work this perfectly, so let's jump into some more examples of how to get the most out of these tools. All right, so let's jump into a full example. This one, I'm going to pop a quick preset on to start with. Just boost that color a little bit. Next set we can do to go in and kind of make our subject stand out a little bit more. I'm actually just gonna bring down the exposure on the entire image, and we're gonna go in and select our subject again. So select subject, give it a second, and this one has actually done a really good job. Even on the hand there, you can see even the hair's done a pretty good job. If we wanted to go and tidy that up, remember we can. Usually you will have to, this one is just a really good example. So we can do subtract brush, and then just go out and brush any area we didn't actually want it to grab, just like that. In the same way, you can add, so I could go down to brush and add in any area. And then we can go and adjust our subject from there. So for this one, I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit in terms of the exposure, bring up my shadows a fraction as well. And that's looking nice. I might even just bring up the clarity a little bit just to make my subject stand out. So if I turn that mask off, you can see again, nice and subtle, but it just makes the subject stand out a little bit more. Don't go too heavy with these, it is tempting. I know myself, I'm often going on the heavier side with edits, but if you push these too much, it's just gonna look unnatural and sometimes it'll look a bit like a green screen. So don't go too hard, try and keep your edits reasonably subtle and it will still have a big impact on the overall image. So the next thing I wanna do on this one, I'm actually gonna go and add another one. I'm gonna select subject again, but this time I'm gonna come down to invert. You can see that's going to select the entire area behind the subject. And I'm actually just gonna soften that a little bit. So I'm gonna bring clarity down. I'm gonna bring my texture down. And I'm actually gonna make it a little bit cooler as well, just to make the subject really stand out. I'm just gonna bring the overall image a little bit warmer to boost those skin tones. This just makes the skin tones stand out a little bit by bringing down the background and making it a little bit cooler. The only thing here, I don't want to make this pole too soft. So we're gonna go in and subtract and we're gonna go brush. 
might turn it on so I can see what I'm doing. So tick show overlay. And I'm just going to brush out the pole here. You can see how this is doing a really good job and that's because I have auto mask turned on. If I turn this off, you can see it's much harder. I'm not actually following those lines. So this is a bit of a cheat. Make sure you have auto mask on. It will use the AI to kind of help you paint between the lines. I wish I had this as a kid. I've always been impatient. So anything that makes you be able to do these things easier is great for me. So go down there and mask out the pole. That just means we're not losing any of that detail in the pole. So turn that off. You can see this whole layer it's actually been quite subtle, it's just softening the background there a little bit. So the last thing I want to do in this image is add one more mask. I'm going to add a radial gradient this time. So I used to use radial filters all the time and I'm still going to. This one I just want to boost the light source at the top here. So I'm going to boost the exposure, bring up the temperature a bit, bring down the clarity to soften, dehaze a little bit. Maybe boost that light a little bit more, make it a little bit bigger. And I'm pretty happy with that. Hit enter. If I turn them off each individually, we've got that radial filter adding that light from the top. We've got that kind of softening of the background. And then we've got also that bringing out the subject a little bit. That one again, quite subtle, but does a really nice job at making our subject stand out. So this next example, obviously a street photo, usually with our street photography, we're going to find our subject doesn't stand out as much as usually when you're shooting a portrait image. So you may think Lightroom is going to struggle a little bit more to find the subject which probably is true, but you can still go and tidy it up using your brushes. It's still going to save you a whole lot of time. This one I'll do a little bit differently. Let's apply a preset first. Got kind of my portrait presets here, which I actually might use. That one looks pretty nice. So let's test out Lightroom and see how it goes finding this subject with a little bit more going on. We'll go select subject. And actually it's done a pretty good job. It may need to be tidied up a little bit. So we'll go subtract, brush, clean that up. If you do wanna change the color of your overlay cause it's blending in a little bit, you can do that here as well. So next thing I wanna do is basically brighten the subject, make it stand out a little bit more. So I'm just gonna bring up the exposure. I wanna bring up the clarity, make it kind of a bit sharper around the subject, bring up the whites a little bit even on that just to make it kind of pop a little bit. Just gonna reduce the contrast a tiny bit. And you can see there mask off, mask on. It's done just a subtle job to boost our subject there. The next thing I wanna show you on this one, I'm actually gonna add in radial gradient. I was gonna say radial filter because that's what they used to be called in classic. But let's go radial gradient. I can get out of this and just hit shift M, which is the shortcut as well. Then just click wherever I wanna add my radial filter. So for this one, I wanna boost that light that's naturally coming from the tram, but keep it behind my subject. So really easy to do that now with these new tools. I'm just gonna boost this to start with. I'm gonna boost the light up. I'm gonna make it a little bit warmer behind the subject. Little bit of haze there, negative clarity and negative texture. This just makes it a little bit dreamier, makes that light nice and hazy. But you can see it's really affecting the subject there. So this is a really nifty trick. I'm gonna come up to subtract, again, select subject and that's going to remove the area where the subject is just like that if i move this around you can see i've got this light now behind my subject where i can move that's not going to affect the subject at all you can see before with just the preset after this image is standing out a little bit more we've got this nice glow behind our subject there so moving on to a landscape image here so we can use our select sky tool this tool really shines here for editing your landscape images because often like this one we expose to keep all the detail in the sky which means the rest of the photo including the foreground the pagoda here can end up quite dark so I'm going to use the select sky tool and let's see how that does. It's done an okay job. I think it's got a little bit of extra here, but I'm going to invert it on this occasion. So by inverting this, 
now we've selected the entire image other than the sky. So we can go ahead and bring up the exposure of the rest of the image, bring up our shadows a little bit, and we've exposed the overall image nicely. I've just lost a lot of detail here in Fuji. So we can fix Fuji here. I'm just going to add in another subtract, come down, maybe a radial filter would be good on this one and just bring that radial filter around Mount Fuji there. That's fine because it's still keeping this nice kind of low cloud and mist there. So I'm happy with that. You can see the overall image is exposed nicely. The next thing I wanna do with this one is actually change a little bit of the color in the sky, make it look a bit more like sunrise, sunset, bring out some of this color that we can see a little bit in the clouds. So again, I'm gonna add in another select sky mask. This one I am just going to very quickly tidy up by using subtract and brush again. All right, to change the color, I could use this hue slider here, but I'm actually mostly going to use the white balance sliders here. So I'm gonna make this warmer and bring in a little bit more magenta. You can see the sky is already looking a little bit more like a nice sunrise, sunset. If I turn off this mask, you can see how I've changed the color in the sky. The only thing I don't like here, if I turn the mask off again, we've lost a lot of this nice blue in the sky. So I'm going to turn that back on. I'm going to come down to subtract. This time I'm gonna come down to color range. This is our little dropper selector tool. You can see, click anywhere to sample colors. I'm gonna sample this blue in the sky and it's actually gonna subtract that blue from our mask. So you can see we've still got color there in the clouds. Turn that off. It's just affecting the clouds now. We've got this blue back in the sky. We can refine that to blend it in a little bit as well. And then we can tweak it a little bit if we want. We might wanna just bring in a little bit of negative texture to soften up, make that nice and dreamy in the sky. So now we've exposed that image nicely. You can see before and after the entire image is exposed nicely. There's a little bit of color added into the sky. So these tools are really handy for all your landscape edits. We can go ahead and finish that edit with the tone curve, adjusting colors however you see fit. So last example here, I've got a really nice shot of a couple here. I'm just gonna boost the overall exposure a little bit before we start the edit. Again, I'm gonna come up and select our subject. This one has done a pretty good job. It's maybe missed a little bit in between the hair here. Otherwise, it's pretty perfect. Of course, I could go and adjust this a little bit, but we already know how to do that. So I'm not gonna waste time showing you that. Let's go ahead and just brighten it up a little bit in terms of the subject. So exposure, shadows, maybe bring up the clarity maybe bring up the whites and just reduce the contrast a little bit. So you can see before, after, or if I turn this mask off, just brought out our subject nicely. This one, again, I wanna go in and adjust that whole area behind the subject without affecting the subject. So again, I'm going to go create new mask, select subject, and then invert it. And it's going to select that entire image other than the subject. Again, we can tidy that up with add and subtract if we needed to. So for this one, what I wanna actually do is keep the saturation there in the subject, just reduce it in the background. So this saves so much time, it really makes your subject stand out. I haven't changed the skin tones at all. In the same way, if I wanted to tweak the white balance and just change the color of the sky a little bit, it's not affecting my skin tones at all. So this is so handy. I can even just soften the sky there a little bit just to make this image feel a little bit more dreamy. Just some subtle adjustments there. And I'm really happy with this. Of course, you can go and make further adjustments from here. I haven't touched any of the rest of the sliders yet, but this is so exciting. I've already got a really nice edit there and I haven't done anything else to this photo other than those masking tools. There we have my tips for getting the most out of these new tools in Lightroom. Hope you did find this video useful. Remember to subscribe if you did. Keep creating, keep growing. I'm TK North, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.